Welcome everyone, my name is Mr McGregor and in this video we're going to look at speed time graphs. And just note this is the first of a two part video. By the end of this video you'll be able to use a speed time graph to describe the motion of an object and you'll be able to calculate acceleration using the gradient of a speed time graph. In year 11 we also have speed time graphs and this is where speed goes on the vertical axis while time remains on the horizontal axis. And this shows the speed of an object at different points in time. And you'll note that a speed graph can have negative values. And that's why I've drawn in this negative part here for our speed time graph. So now we're going to go back to that example and have a look at both the distance time graph and the speed time graph and see how they match up. So at the top here we have our distance time graph. He moved forward with a constant speed to the 100 meters, stayed stationary at the 100 meter mark, and then at a slower rate or slower speed moved back towards the starting point. So in our speed time graph when he's doing that first 10 second sprint that is a high constant speed so therefore it is a long way away from our speed point at the uh, at the start and it is a horizontal line showing that the speed did not change. For this middle section when he was stationary the speed was zero and so we show that by putting a line right on our axis there where it matches up with the zero speed point. And then when he's coming backwards towards the start, that is a negative value. We note it's also a horizontal line, but it is a smaller distance away from our axis compared to the first one as he's moving at a slower speed as he comes back. Now I've got a speed time graph with several colored lines on it. And I want you to work out which line shows zero speed. That's right, hopefully you got it. It's the yellow line because it's right at the zero point on the speed axis. A fast speed. The purple line shows a fast speed. It's horizontal meaning constant and a long way up meaning fast. The slow speed. The yellow line is the slow speed because it's a lot closer to the zero point so not such a big speed number. And which one here shows acceleration? Again a little bit of a trick, there's actually two correct answers. Both the red and the blue line show acceleration. The red line is a much higher acceleration because the speed is changing more quickly but both show acceleration. So here is a speed time graph and we're going to try and find the accelerations of part A, B and C. We're going to use our acceleration equation that says the acceleration is equal to the change in speed over the change in time. And similar to the previous video, we're going to use our gradient formula as well. So if we look at section A, we can see it starts at 11 meters per second and it increases its speed at a steady rate to 22 meters per second. So in this case, the change in speed is from 11 up to 22, which matches up with our rise. And our change in time is from 0 to 10 which matches up with our run. So once again, when we calculate the gradient, we are calculating the acceleration of our object. So as I said, for section A, it had a run of 10 seconds and a rise of 11 meters per second. When we plug that into our equation, we get 1.1 meters per second per second for section A. Section B is a horizontal line so we'd expect that to come out as no acceleration because the speed isn't changing. And with our change in speed of 0, a time of 20, we do get that, 0 meters per second per second. Section C has gone from 22 down to 0, therefore it's decreased its speed by 22 meters per second, and so I put a negative in front of my 22. Divide it by 10 because it took 10 seconds again from 30 to 40, and we get an answer of negative 2.2 meters per second per second. The negative in this case simply means that the speed is decreasing. So now you can use a speed time graph to describe the motion of an object and you can calculate the acceleration using the gradient of a speed time graph. In the next part we're going to look at how to calculate distance from a speed time graph. 